Hey what's up guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Ben and this is my new to me Husqvarna 701. I am so excited to take this bike out for the first ride and that's what we're going to do today. But I want to go over some of the things that the previous owner put on this bike as well as just some of the specs for you real quick. Unlike the parallel twin in the Tenere 700, the Husqvarna is just a big old thumper similar to my Gen 3 KLR 650. Now the Gen 3 pumps out about 40 horsepower where this bike pumps out 74. Now obviously you might get a little bit of a boost from the couple extra cc's that this bike is packing compared to the KLR 650, but the KLR is designed to be, well, Kawasaki is a long range motorcycle, and to be able to achieve that long range, you need a motor that is reliable. Obviously, the higher you tune a motor, the more horsepower you squeeze out of it, the less longevity you're gonna get out of it. So that's actually one reason that I never wanted to be an owner of one of these bikes. Obviously I've changed my mind on that and I will sort of go over that during the test ride. The other really impressive thing about this bike is unlike the Gen 3 KLR 650 or the Tenere 700 that weigh eh, right around 460 pounds, this bike weighs just over 350 pounds wet, which is like 40 pounds heavier than my 12 horsepower TW200. This bike is insane. Now, as always, I will be making some updates to this bike, but the previous owner did quite a few things that I'm really pretty happy about. We've got a Cyclops LED inside of here. This is the windscreen off of, I believe, a KTM 690. We've got Husqvarna handguards on here, which I think must be aftermarket. If they came with these, that would be awesome. Most of the bikes that I'm used to do not. We've got some Oxford heated grips that I am pretty excited to try out. It's got a fuel dongle as well as an ABS dongle and a kill switch for that right here. Rack on the back as well as a fender eliminator, LED blinkers on the back here, real low profile. Front and back Continental TKC 80s. And the whole bike was actually professionally lowered a little bit over two inches, which actually ends up being about perfect for me. I can still barely get the balls of my feet on the ground. These are tall bikes meant for big, aggressive riders that know what they're doing. I think I'm ready for this bike, but I know I've got a lot of learning to do and I cannot wait to get on the trails with this thing. But for now, let's just take this thing out of the road and see how it feels. So between my brand new super stiff motocross boots and my big winter gloves, I feel like there's no way that I'm gonna be able to do this bike justice. I feel like I'm fumbling around like it's my first ride. Oh my gosh. See, I can't even get my foot in there to shift this thing has some insane power and I guess really some in insane torque. Obviously the Tenere 700 is a very powerful bike and also a very torquey bike but again because this has more horsepower and is not quite half the weight but definitely a lot lighter like one of me lighter. This thing just feels like I said just insane. I mean it it is like absolutely nothing that I've ever owned before, as much as it feels like a motocross bike, it can still do 70 miles an hour on the highway all day long. I mean, people basically turn these into adventure bikes. They put a big fairing that kind of makes it almost look like a Tenere 700. I mean, this thing is just nuts. And I mean, why, why wouldn't everybody want a bike like this? Why would you settle for you know, as great of a bike as it is, why would you settle for the Tenere 700 or a KLR 650 or a DR 650 when you can have way more power and a way lighter bike? Basically, it's it's the, the whole reason that I, I never wanted to buy one of these in the first place. Husqvarna, KTM, which is basically the same thing. Gas Gas, which I think is also the same thing. Beta, all those guys, really even any motocross bike, they're made for, for for performance, like I said earlier. They're not meant to do super high mileage rides and you know go for thousands of miles between oil changes. I mean, they need they need so much maintenance so often that it, it just wouldn't make any sense. And on top of that, even bikes like this that are meant to go a little bit farther than their sort of higher, strong, smaller bore counterparts, they're just not really really in the game to be the most reliable they're definitely a type of bike that you are buying for the performance not for the longevity and reliability i've sort of always wanted to to think that i value longevity and reliability over performance but then the bikes that i buy i'm i'm never really happy with but at the same time you know i i, I still want to be able to jump on a bike and be able to trust it, I figured I might as well buy one and I guess find out for myself. So I'm kind of putting, I guess my money sort of where my heart is and where my mouth is on that and buying something that 
I know I very well, very well may regret when I have to spend, you know, a thousand dollars to to rebuild it and, you know, spend that, that time in the garage rather than out on the road and the trail. So I feel like I'm constantly shifting this thing. It, I think, has a lot more go to it than I think it does. <laughs> but it is kind of vibey, and that is definitely something that I noticed jumping on this right away compared to the Tenere 700 is that bike feels incredibly smooth out on the road. It feels incredibly solid. And it, I mean, it, it definitely feels like a bike that you could put high miles on. And I don't want to say that this doesn't feel that way. I mean, it, it definitely feels better and more capable on the road than say the TW200 does. But it's not all that much different feeling than like my DRZ400 was. I mean, the bars definitely have some vibe to it. The, I guess it's not really the tank, but where your legs hit the bike definitely vibrates. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not a parallel twin. From what I've heard, I mean, these things can cruise at high speeds all day. I guess we can pick up the pace. Woo! A little bit. <laughs> or a lot. I guess, honestly, at just about 60, it feels incredibly smooth, honestly. It seems like it kind of smooths out around this speed. And there's definitely a lot of wind because we have, you know, very little protection. And it's pretty noisy in my helmet. I guess I really should have thrown my earplugs in. I run them all the time on the KLR and the T7 anyway, so it's loud, but I mean, man, it, it honestly feels great. As much as I was excited to have a little bit of wind protection, I think it's probably shooting a lot of wind under my helmet, which hopefully is not extremely annoying to you guys. Is that camera dead already? Oh, of course it is. For as much low-end power as this thing has, I'm honestly surprised at how good it feels that high up. And I guess maybe that's just because I'm comparing it to bikes like to my XL250R and the and the TW. But I mean, like even the DRZ, I don't know. It just seemed like it never had that much of a range that it had the rip your arms off, pull the front wheel up, flip you over backwards at low end, but then also be able to cruise at 60 completely comfortably. I think I'm going to like this bike. <laughs> now the Oxford heated grips I've got on 75% right now. I think it's like 40 degrees out. And I've got to say, I think it's partially just because the heating elements are probably a lot closer to your hand and kind of built into the grip rather than underneath, like the Tusk grip heaters that I've got on my other bikes. But I think these definitely seem like they get and stay a lot hotter. My butt's starting to hurt a little bit, not quite as much as I thought it would. Uh, so I think we're definitely gonna have to throw probably a seat concept seat on this to make it a little bit more comfortable. But I'm interested to see what it's gonna be like to try to take this on a you know four hour day where we're spending two hours on the road two hours on the trail you know what is that what is that last hour going to be like on the road is it going to be miserable is it going to be fun i don't know we'll we'll have to see oh boy yeah that seat is starting to hurt <laughs> standing up though uh i've got to say i definitely feel a little bit higher in the pegs i think than i would like to and i know you can get a drop kit for these. I don't know if that sets them back at all or not, but I definitely feel like I'm a little bit higher than I would like to be, I guess. I'd like to kind of be down into the bike a little bit more. Uh, bars definitely feel like they are down low and generally don't like that when I'm standing. I like to have the bars kind of high up like the Tenere 700. That bike is really nice to stand on. If I crouch down a little bit where I really should be where I'm when I'm riding like this, it definitely feels good. Bars are not too terribly close. And I think uh, I definitely feel like I've got enough control over this to at least try to get into some crazy stuff off-road. We'll have to wait a little bit until the snow is gone. I actually already dumped this thing in my driveway. <laughs> Apparently the Continentals on here are not near as grippy in the snow as the D-Sports. I don't know if I want to throw a set of D-Sports on this right away or if I want to ride the the, the, what are these Continental TKC 80s out? I don't know if you guys have ever had any experience with a hydraulic clutch, but this is, I think, got to be my first, other than, I, I guess, a, a vehicle. But uh, it's, it's definitely something that I think is going to take a little bit of getting used to. I mean, I guess it's just a new bike, so that in general kind of takes some getting used to. It certainly feels like it is much lighter and still pretty easy to control. I mean, I think 
I think again it'll just take some getting used to it. I do sort of feel like with a, a cable there's I don't know some change in the tension throughout the cycle of it where this I don't really think there is I mean I think it's it pulls the same no matter where you're at so I think maybe it just takes a little bit longer to kind of get your brain wrapped around that and realize that just because it feels the same doesn't mean that it is the same and it's more about position than it is you know how much how much tension there is on it so I mean I, I think eventually I will like this more and the uh, slave cylinder on this was replaced, so I hopefully don't have to worry about that at all. Other than that, I mean, there's a couple other things that you gotta look out for. I'm definitely not an expert on it, but as far as I know, uh, this bike should be more or less good to go. Valves have been done. So I guess we'll, we'll just have to see. Hopefully everything holds together. I definitely was glad that the clutch was all squared away so I didn't have to worry about that going out. That would not be fun. So thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this video was interesting to you. If you guys want to make sure you see more action on the 701, make sure you click that subscribe button. We'll be doing videos hopefully on the regular here at least once a week if not twice a week and we'll definitely be getting this thing into the woods, doing some mods and seeing just exactly if I can keep up with everything that this bike has to offer. Uh, I am pretty pumped about this. So get out there and ride any chance you get. If you can't do that right now, here's some more videos to check out in the meantime. Catch you guys next time.